Yo, what's good, family? Shout out to my doggy, Mr. Muhammad Ahmad Bruce Lee, for coming through and boosting up your man the YB coin, no doubt. So, we got some unfortunate news for any Anthony John Stewart fans right now. Apparently, it's been leaked. Sources close to the Usyk camp have informed the YB that Usyk has been tearing up the paint. Yeah, he's been going hard in the cut. That's what he's been doing. Here we go. Usyk reportedly busting up sparring partners. Boxers being sent home. Yeah, Usyk reportedly busting a whole bunch of sparring partner cheeks. Yeah, boxers are being sent home with a large pot of Vaseline. 100%. They must keep listening. Right now I'm hearing Usyk or Usyk's victims best believe their booties right now must be kept supple they saw i'm going to tell you what it is I'm, that's what alleged what's alleged is using firing partners are super duper sore man yeah they don't want no more sesh that's what i'm hearing i'm hearing you six firing partners don't want no more sesh they tapping out no doubt here we go according to the yb's leaked exclusive sources unified heavyweight world champion alexander Usyk. Is busting his sparring partner's cheeks in his ongoing camp. Usyk is preparing for his upcoming rematch with Anthony Johnstewer, scheduled for August 20th in Saudi Arabia. Last September, Usyk outboxed Johnstewer over 12 rounds to capture all of the three belts. Kazakhstan, heavyweight, Kazaka. Yes, yeah, so next names, obviously, you man the YB don't speak all these next languages, so obviously a next name, heavyweight, next name, next name, who help Usyk prepare for the first encounter with John Stewart is helping the Ukrainian boxer prepare for the rematch. He, next name, says there are days when Usyk goes to war with him. It's not easy to hurt, next name. But he's been on the receiving end of Usyk's girthy wick a few times. But a lot of his heavyweights have been sent home. They just can't take the girth in camp. Yeah, Usyk been giving his sparring partners way too much girth. They just can't keep up. <laughs> Call me a, if people say I'm a liar. You see the quotes there, hundred percent. He says Usyk is in tremendous shape. He says Usyk has a tremendous shape. He has seen, he has said, as soon as Usyk came back from Jeddah, from the press conference, the day he arrived back, he phoned up Nurse Alton, who was sitting in his hotel room, and said to him, I want you. In sparring today. I want to spar with you today. Yeah. I want to. Trust me. You think he was doing some sparring. <laughs> he was sparring all the way up inside Nurse Holton. Yeah. He told Nurse, Nurse Holton. Listen. I bought you a hotel room. I posted you up in the hotel room. And now I'm fixing to come do some sparring inside you. 100%. <laughs> I'm just telling you what you Call me a liar. Is that not what the quote said? 100%. Literally. Got off the plane. And started sparring straight away. And as Mazolov said, he was in a foul mood. Oh, he was in a really angry mood. And he wanted to go to war. Anthony Johnstua is in trouble. Usyk was sending heavyweights, six foot six, big burly dons and whatnot, back, back home with their backs blown out. Nurse Sultan was the only one of the heavyweights that he kept on throughout the whole camp because he would actually challenge him and give him a very tough time and from what I understand there were points where Nurse Sultan was being told by Usyk no I need you to come on oh, again call me a liar no I need you to bus harder yeah like, don't hold back on me. Just go to war. Just keep tearing up the booty hole. <laughs> That's what it says here. Call me a liar. Look, I need you to come in the... Boom. Yeah, don't hold back. He wants... He wants. Listen, he wants the wicking. 
You know, you sit was begging to be whipped down by some next big burly donny, big heavyweight burly don. John Stewart has made several adjustments to his training team to get ready. Listen, Johnston's brought in a light, a lightweight train. That's what he's done, and he's got a big dude that no one ever heard of, Angel Fernandez as the head trainer. It's a wrap for Johnston. Yeah, John. The thing is, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. With this article or not. Let's get something straight here. Nothing's guaranteed, but what I will guarantee you is this. AJ could literally reincarnate Custy Amato, and it still wouldn't make a scrap of difference. The only thing that's going to make any difference from AJ's point of view is his mentality. That's it, honestly. I don't care what, honestly, I don't care if it's Rob McCrappen. I don't even care if it's me as such. I don't care who it is. I don't care who he's got in the camp. If he doesn't flick that switch, it's a wrap for him. It just it really is as simple as that. Now, obviously, the trainer's job is to is supposedly to try and flick the switch or to help him, enable him to get to that point. But on, when that bell goes, it will come down to do you want do you want to go back there? Do you want to go to that dark place that you begged Rob McCrappen not to have to go to after the Klitschko fight? That's the only way he has any role in this fight. And it will be very apparent from the first round, in my opinion, what time it really is. Now, anyway, with that in mind, with the fact that the only way AJ has a say in this fight whatsoever is if he flicks the switch, this whole article only makes it even harder for AJ. This whole article implies that even if AJ is on his full job, guess what? So is Usyk, if you get what I'm saying. Usyk, from what... These are the rumours. What I will say is, before the first AJ fight, from what I remember, there weren't any stories of Usyk trying to dig Don's guts out. Them ones weren't there. So... For someone who tracks, or someone who covers the the news flow or whatever, I think it's relevant. I'll give it waiting. Because U6 team aren't like, I don't know, certain teams who are going to be out there talking about sparring stories. Oh, you know what I mean? There's some, there's some camps who live on sparring stories. They live on, oh, I've been knocking people out on sparring. Every camp, you hear the same thing. And then fight night happens, and they ain't knocking no one out. Do you understand? We've heard about there's certain camps who live on sparring stories. Usyk, he's not one of them guys. Yeah, before the first fight, I don't remember hearing anything about sparring, to be honest with you. And he went in there and did his thing. So on that basis, bearing in mind U6 team are normally pretty quiet. The fact we're hearing this, I'm going to give it some waiting. Yeah? U6 team ain't people who just gas the place up. If they were, I'll tell you, listen, he always gassing. Yeah, if you 16 are always talking about bashing people up in sparring and blowing Don's backs out, I'd say, well, listen, people, you 6 always talking about digging some man's guts out, but he go in there and play tip-tap-toe, so we can discount it. But this really is the first time, and especially when you um, add that in with the environment he finds himself in, with the whole you sick and, Ru- and the Ruskies, again, it gives it more credibility. If there ever was a time... For Usyk to be going gully. It would be now wouldn't it. So all in all. It's bad news for John Stewart. And this is looking good for fight fans. Because either way. Whether AJ turns up or not. One of my big problems with Usyk has been. You might know me. In general with boxing. I can't stand when people don't finish their dinner. Yeah. Now honestly listen. Sometimes when you're in a hard fight. There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, if you're in a 50-50 fight, you're in a 50-50 fight. No one's asking you to get stoppage. But when... You know what I mean? When you got your man on a plate... AJ was on a plate for Usyk. And he refused to finish his dinner. That's rude. Yeah? I don't rate that. And that's one of the key things that's always given me... It's always irritated me. It's one thing... No one's asking. I wouldn't ever ask someone to be in a 50-50 fight and then go reckless for the last little bit just for the sake of doing it and taking risk only to get knocked out yourself. I'd never advise that. But when someone's in the condition AJ was in, fully gassed, hanging on the ropes 
I expect you. I mean, I have, I've never done boxing to any high level yet, but even as an amateur, or even as a low am level amateur like myself, yeah, you you know body signals. When someone's, there's no more body, there's no more invitening body signal than seeing a man slumped on the ropes with his mouth wide open. That is literally, even for an amateur, most, any, even the most primitive boxers, yeah, when they see that, they jump straight on it. Nothing more should turn you on than seeing a man on the ropes blowing out of his ass. He's, that there is literally the, the body language of finishing me off. I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm ready to go. That's what that signals. And despite that being signalled by AJ, Usyk chose to back off and whatever else. So, with that in mind, I'm hoping now, these, with these stories in mind, and with the political situation, he going to be on this thing right now. And that's what, really, AJ deserves. AJ doesn't deserve to be able to go points. He deserves to have it put fully on him. Yeah, if AJ's going to lose, he needs to be knocked out, in my opinion. That's what he deserves. If he don't want to turn up and dig deep, he deserves to be knocked out. Bottom line, I ain't trying to watch this big buff dude in there, just hanging around the place, going points. So after the fight, you can say, oh, I tried to box. No, you got knocked out, is what you did. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, because it's one or the other. Either AJ going to turn up, and get stuck in and make it a fight. And who knows? Usyk might be basing a lot of, or a lot of the first fight might be a key reason that Usyk sprung. Yeah, he might be thinking, wow, I was in there and AJ super sweet. I popped him in the mouth in the first round and he didn't want none. My point is, in the seventh round, in the first fight, AJ hit Usyk with one big shot. And honestly, it rocked his world, Michael Jackson style. And Usyk's whole body language changed. So for all we know, Usyk's proper sprung. But it, it won't, in my opinion, it won't take much. All AJ has to do, AJ could actually flip this around and get the advantage in as much as... Not, I'm not saying Usyk's not going to be under-preparing for AJ. But if, a, if Usyk thinks AJ's super sweet, yeah, and it turns out he's not, he's going to get the shock of the world, any he? Damn, I thought this guy was finished. I thought this guy was psychologically shot. And then he's not. But the odds are, unfortunately people, the odds are, this is all hope. Yeah? You man the why be on the copium right now. Oh, but what, AJ might know. Listen, the odds are, right now, yeah, the odds are, AJ is, is psychologically finished. And all he's doing is scooping up money. That's what the odds are saying right now. If I had to bet, I'd go with that. Simple as that. And with that in mind, either way, to be honest, if AJ is psychologically finished, he deserves to be stopped. And even if he's not psychologically finished, even if he does intend on digging in deep, he still doesn't deserve to have an easier fight like the first one. Really, if AJ had done his job properly, the first fight would have been the easiest one to win, in my opinion. I think, I don't care what no one says, that fight for me was on a plate. That first one was. The second one... I don't want us I don't want AJ to have it on a plate for him. I want him to have to go to a very dark place to pull the win off because that's what he's put himself in. AJ needs to learn if he is to win this next fight. He needs to learn. Listen. It's best I get it right the first time. Yeah, because all this rematch shit it's just long. That's what he needs to get. AJ doesn't seem to get that. And the way he's been fighting too lackadaisical. He's not really fussed, is he? Win or, win, win or lose, he's like, oh, well, I trained hard. It's not about training hard. We can all train hard. It's about delivering when it matters. Anyway, man, listen. It's good news for boxing fans. I'm glad to hear this. I've never seen an angry side of you, sick. I think it's about time we do see it. And also, thinking more broadly, if you see goes in there, yeah, and he's looking like a demon... If Usyk's able to tear up AJ viciously, that really puts the whole... Like for example, right now, Usyk versus Fury, it just feels like a shutout for me. But if Usyk goes in there, yeah, and properly demolishes AJ, that whole Usyk and Fury thing is so much more intriguing for me. 
Now, if Usyk goes in there, yeah, and plays tip tap toe with Fury, I mean with Usyk, I mean with AJ, I don't think Usyk can out tip tap toe Fury. But if Usyk goes in there, yeah, with AJ, and he just he, he's found a way to aggressively molest AJ, yeah, that will tell me that wow, man, this guy's proper deep. Not only can he out tip tap toe the bigger man, he can also that will show me his IQs on a true different level. Do you understand? And for, um, the point is, at that point, at the point where U6 demolished AJ, it at least begs, or it at least implies, it at least allows the question of, ooh, is there a possibility U6 has so much IQ, he's going to be able to go in there and f put, put that IQ to work, the same one that's outboxed AJ, the same one that's now demolished AJ, and put it into some use to beat Fury some way, somehow. Do you understand? So all round, man, it's looking good in my opinion, 100%. Well, it's looking good for everyone but AJ. But really, in reality, this is good for AJ and all of his fans. Because he don't deserve no easy wins. He's been had to easy wins now. Yeah? Any win I see from him, it needs to be earned. No more rocking up and nicking fights on points like the, use it, like the Ruiz rematch, for example. Ain't no one trying to watch that one. 